Thank you for joining with me today. I'm recording this on Tuesday the 8th of December. And we're thinking at the moment of the lessons that God has been teaching and showing me through this experience of COVID. On any given day, none of us really know what the Lord may have planned for us. It will always be for our good, even when we can't see it at the time. But when our lives are forcibly slowed down, we see lots of things more clearly. We have more time. We have more opportunity to, opportunity to think about them. And you really do need to think about things to process just what's going on. When I was unwell and was in bed, each day it seemed, well, long on the one hand, much like the ones before. And so when God would surprise, it really was, it was great help. And I got lots of surprises in many forms. I got surprises in the forms of cards and texts and calls, books even, meals, treats. Every single one of them was a blessing. In some ways, I just felt this is another little surprise from God. And overall, I would have to say the surprise to me was just of the kindness of people and the thoughtfulness of people, people I hadn't heard of from a very long time, or sometimes we hadn't been in contact directly for even years, it seemed. And that was a, an amazing blessing. What was I learning? Well, I was learning that God clearly knows what we need and when we need it. When we think of the process, that is the process of something like that happening, when it finally happens in your life, the surprise of God, when you trace it back, you can see the process. Now, it may have been a few seconds. A text message does not take very long to write. It takes a little bit of time to think about doing it. It may take a lot of time, depending on who you're doing it to or sending it to. On the other hand, it may have taken days or weeks. Sometimes people plan and organize things that, that don't happen just for at the moment. They may take another week or two or even months or even years for that matter before the final surprise arrives in your life. I was thinking of my good friend Victor. I asked if, if you would pray for him and I'm just glad to be able to report that he is making steady progress. Well, he had his collapse as he was driving, driving a customer back home. But it so happened that that customer was a nurse, a retired nurse, I think. And when he came to the traffic lights, the traffic lights turned red. And that's the moment when he collapsed. And so it just happened then that an ambulance car was in the lane beside them. And all of these little things coincided in the providence of God to bless Victor by the way of providing all of the things that he needed, health, direction, and a very swift journey to the hospital eventually. Is God surprised very much? Can you imagine the processes of all those things, the timing? Maybe somebody decided they would just hang on an extra minute or go a bit faster, or maybe 0.1 of a mile an hour. It doesn't take hardly anything like that, just to fit it all in, so many details, isn't it? Quite amazing. Our lives are full of God's surprises if we can just slow down and see and savour them. As I was lying in bed, forcibly slowed down, my vision was just the treetops out the window. A little bit in the distance, I could see these trees moving and swaying. And many times I just watched as different birds would come and roost there or just land there or having their kind of lay-by, bird lay-by or whatever they were doing. But just interesting to watch the different birds and how they interacted and thinking about God's creation and, and God's care for all of those animals. And then watching the clouds and the sunlight. How God would so often surprise by some strange and remarkable and beautiful shape and shadows in the sky. And then one day a grey squirrel appeared as well. I guess only the second or the third time I've ever seen a grey squirrel here in all our time. 
But these things were just little surprises of God and having been forced to slow down, I was able to see them and appreciate them and benefit from them. What is even more remarkable is when God surprises us and the those he uses in the process who may not know that they are actually part of God's surprise for someone else. I remember a time when I was in Romania and my good friend and then the boss of that work that I was involved in for the overseas work of the church, he used to just send us a fax and then he would say, get on a plane and go and there'll be somebody there to meet you. Well, you know, it was maybe a good method, you know, if you like to live dangerously or risky, but that's what we did. And I went to Romania, got a bus that took me from Budapest across the border and to Aradia. The bus station is on the edge of the city. And so I got out and I went into this bus station. It was pretty empty except for a group of uh, Romanis, or some people call them gypsies, but the Romani, the Romani community. And they were all gathered around as they do in community. And they had a big bag of sunflower seeds and they were eating these and spitting out the, the, the husks. Of course, they turned to me and offered me a big handful of seeds, which was a pleasant surprise. I can't say I was able to handle the seeds maybe as well, but it was a very nice act, though we couldn't actually speak each other's language. I sat there for a little while wondering, I wonder if anybody will come. And nobody did come for quite a while. So I went across the street and there was a little shop which was just about a door in the wall, but it had a sign outside, an advertising sign, you know, sort of like a Romanian version of Mars or Coke. So I kind of thought there must be something here. And I went inside. Once again, couldn't speak the language very well. I explained my situation as best I could. And the person who was behind the till, they just simply said, no problem in their language. They opened the till, they put their hand in and they grabbed a lot of coins and they put them in my hand and said, away you go. They didn't want anything. They just gave me the money, which meant that I could telephone. I had a card with one number on it. Sounds a bit like some sort of a spy thing, but it wasn't that spy thing. But anyway, I got the card out, rang the number. There was nobody there. But what I did was I just went out and I had a look. And usually, as you know, at uh, bus stations, even quite remote and basic ones, there can be the odd taxi. There was a taxi. The man in the taxi, the taxi driver, spoke very good English. And I said, I have this card here. And I says, and I don't know where it is. And he took it and he had a look at it and he said, don't you worry, I jumped in. He could have been kidnapping me or whatever, but he wasn't. He was a very nice man whose family had gone to America and he had gone for a year, but he decided he didn't want to. It just wasn't for him. Even though Aradia, everything was falling apart. I couldn't, you know, I find it strange. All the attractions of America did not seem attractive to him, which was interesting. However, he took me exactly to the place. He took my bag, carried it up the stairs for me, and he brought me to the place that I needed to go. Now, there were lots of surprises in that particular experience. God had all those surprises, and I was blessed. It, it was out of my comfort zone at the time. And you see, sometimes when we think of a surprise, it's like God will kind of stroke your head with a nice soft thing, and there'll be no struggle or trial in it. Sometimes we have to go into the COVID experience to experience the, the surprise in a new way. Sometimes we have to go down a little to find God meeting us there and surprising us in that place. And I think when we slow our lives down a little more and we spend more time waiting, that word that you read in the Bible quite often, wait on the Lord. You ever think about it? You can't wait in a hurry. You know, you can't rush at waiting. And it's so profound, really, isn't it? Taking time to wait. I recall one night, I was on a late journey in those days before I was married. You could do a lot of driving, and I did a lot of driving around from place to place and whatnot, quite late sometimes. Anyway, the fan belt in the car had broken, and the red light came on for ignition. Back in those days, cars were a bit different. I knew that was what the problem was, and there was no way I could fix it because I had nothing with me. I was about maybe nine or ten miles from home. It was very early, early in the morning, late at night, and I thought, there's nobody's going to call here. This is me for the night. My Bible was lying on my, the passenger seat, and I just opened it, and it opened at Psalm 27, and verse 14 was highlighted for me. 
That's the verse that says, wait on the Lord, I say, wait on the Lord. And I remember just talking to the Lord and saying, well, do you know, I'm just going to do that. I don't know that I can do anything else anyway, but I'll just wait here and see what happens. It would only have been about a few minutes after that. And the car pulled up beside me. The guy went down his window and he shouted at me and I said, oh, who is it? And it turned out it was a friend that I had known some years before. Now, why he was there at that time? He said, I recognised your car and I wondered what on earth's wrong with you. Well, the end of the story was we got the car sorted and I got home and the Lord surprised me as I waited on him. Isn't it such an encouragement when we do that? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. What a great verse for us to take into the day. Isn't he a wonderful heavenly father, even in the hard times of life? Well, I've gone over my 10 minutes this morning, but... My, my final challenge is let, let's pray to be a part of God's surprises. And perhaps maybe he's challenging you today to go and surprise someone in a blessed way and so glorify his name. Father, that's what I pray for all of us, that you would put into our minds and into our hearts the names, the places, the people, the ideas, the creativity to use the gifts that you've given us in order to surprise others in a blessed way and glorify your name. Amen. So let's go and do it, if we can, in some small way. Even a text, it'll surprise you as well. But God surprises others and blesses them.